Welcome to the VATEC Video Education Center. In our session today, we're going to review the detailed steps to acquire a 4-view TMJ image with the PaxI 2D system. The objective will be able to capture a 4-sectional view with the mouth in an open and closed position on a 23-year-old patient with a normal body type. To begin our image acquisition, we'll start from the EasyDent 4 viewer. Along the left hand side we have three basic options to search for our patient, either by chart number, first name, or by last name. In this case here, to do a search by chart number, we'll double left click with the mouse, enter in the chart number, and then select enter on the keyboard. Verify that this is the correct patient under the patient list, and then navigate the mouse to the toolbar on the icon that says Pano slash Ceph, navigate down and then left click on Pano. This will then launch the capture software. Selecting the Pano icon from the Easy Dent 4 viewer will then launch the capture software. It is this capture software which is now communicating with your PaxI device to communicate what type of image to acquire as well as the exposure for that image as well. In this window, we can verify what mode that we're in, the patient that's going to be scanned, the exposure for that particular scan, as well as our image options along the right-hand side. In this case here, we're going to verify that we are in the panel mode for doing our 2D panorama image. We can then also verify that we are in the correct patient chart by identifying our chart number, name, gender, as well as her age. It's this demographic information that will automatically set the KVP and MAs for our particular exposure. We have the option of male, female, as well as child. Any patient who is 13 years or under will automatically default to child. However, it is encouraged to look at each patient on a patient-by-patient -patient basis to determine whether the growth meets the age of that particular patient or if they excel and have a much later growth development such as a late teen then they should be moved to an adult category based on gender of either female or male. Once we set our exposure based on gender or age we also have the ability to adjust our exposure based on density such as hard, normal, and soft. Classifications for these would be such as age, where an 18-year-old patient potentially has a harder bone density than someone who is elderly and may be under a softer category. Facial features, someone as a patient having excess fat content may require more radiation to get proper exposure, as well as ethnic differences, such as African Americans and Asians having a harder bone density than Caucasians. A vast majority of your patients will probably fall under the normal category. So it's encouraged to look at each patient on a case-by-case -case basis to see which end of the spectrum they fall under. Once we've chosen the exposure for our image, we can then navigate to the upper right-hand corner and determine our image quality. And there are three image quality options to choose from. Normal, High Definition, or HD, ultra high definition or UHD. Depending on which option you select will then make changes as far as the device as well as image quality. For instance, under normal the exposure time is roughly 10 seconds. HD is roughly 13 seconds. UHD is a 20 second scan. The detail that you'll render within the image is also directly proportionate to the size of the image. For instance, normal will generate an image size roughly 1 megabyte, HD between 3 and 4 megabytes, and UHD roughly 30 to 40 megabytes in size. Due to the size of the file, this will also affect the amount of time needed to recreate these images. For instance, normal is between 3 and 5 seconds of processing time, HD between 5 and 10 seconds of processing time, and UHD between 15 and 20 seconds of processing time. 
the most common option is HD or high definition which is a 13 second scan and roughly 3 megabyte image size. Once you have selected the image quality we can then skip over arch selection and pano examination and begin with our special examination section. In this section we have the ability to acquire a four sectional view of the TMJ in either a lateral position or in a PA position. Left clicking on TMJ lateral open will provide an illustration of the orientation as far as the patient positioning and mouth orientation. We also have the ability to capture the same in the mouth in a closed position as well in our lateral TMJ. The TMJ PA open has a projection going anterior posterior as well as anterior posterior in a closed position as well. In this example we're going to do a TMJ open verify that all my patient information is correct verify my exposure is correct image quality special examination mode and then select confirm at the bottom of the screen this will then set the device for the image capture and once the machine is in position you'll then be prompted to position your patient in this capture what we're going to be doing with this TMJ is to capture the condyles in an open and closed position. And you're going to be doing that with the device making two rotations around the patient. We're also going to be using a different appliance for this as well. The appliance that we have in the device currently is what we typically use for our panorama images. The appliance we're going to be using for our TMJ is our appliance specifically for that capture mode. What the patient is going to be doing is placing the base of their nose on the horizontal ridge of the appliance itself. I'm going to place it within the device itself, press down firmly, and make sure that it's seated with the base itself. Once it's positioned properly, we're now ready to put the patient into the machine itself. So what I'm going to do in terms of our image capture is very similar to what we would do, let's say, for a panorama image. When you come into the device, I'm going to have you identify where I want your hands to be. In this case here, you want them on the bottom of the bar, palms facing up towards the ceiling, and you would kind of tuck your elbows in towards your body a little bit, help cut down on lateral movement. Okay? From there, I'm also going to have you place your feet forward, about an inch forward or vertical. Okay? And I'll identify where I want your feet to be there as well. And then lastly, I'm going to have you place the base of your nose on the horizontal ridge. So let's kind of press up against your upper lip right there. Okay? And most importantly, we want to make sure that you're positioned in such a way that way your jaw is free to open when we do our first exposure. Okay? So with that being said, let me step off to the side here. And then come on forward here if you would, and again, push your hands on the bottom of the bar just like that, okay? And if you would, slide your feet forward so they reach my feet, okay? And have your feet for the shoulder width apart as well, okay? So want a nice straight posture here, okay? A feet forward about an inch of uh, vertical here, get the vertebrae level here. Even though we're not going to be radiating the anterior area as much, uh, it helps us just keep the posture the same as would for a traditional panorama image. So from here, and come around over here to my left, and I'm going to then bring the machine down a little bit again. Just like we would for a digital panorama image, I get myself in the habit of bringing the device down to the patient itself. In this case here, I'm going to lower so this uh, horizontal ridge here is almost in line with the base of her nose. So at this point in time, I'm going to help her come forward here and put the base of the nose right on the appliance like this here. Again, what's critical is to ensure that the patient's jaw is free and not touching any part of the device itself. At this point in time, the position lights here are relatively uh, similar to that of the digital panorama. For instance, the mid sagittal light is going to be positioned the same way. Essentially, the center of the filtrum is actually a little vertical ridge in the middle of that appliance there, and also the center between the eyebrows up here. So if I need to, I can move the patient's face as I need, make sure it's centered on here. Once I've got that positioned properly, I'm then going to adjust my Frankfurt light. I'm going to bring this up here again to the top of my tragus. like that. And then keeping in mind that that trigger essentially becomes a pivot point. As I move the machine up or down to get this light to project about a half an inch down below her eyelid, that trigger back here is not going to move. So what I'm going to do though to move uh, the chin up or down is use my elevator button here or use the column button here in the front as well. So if I press down the down button here, 
and just put it very slightly in the back of the patient's head, make sure the nose is pressed on the uh, horizontal ridge of that appliance, and then adjust my fentanyl light here again. Once I had that position where I wanted to, the last light, which is typically our canine light, because we're not going to be positioning it as it relates to the anterior region of the arch, what I'm going to do is position this light here, so now it's going to the commissure, or the corner of the lip over here. So in this case here, I moved it back to the mo as posterior as that canine light will go. So at this point in time, I had lights projecting where I want them to be. I'm then going to go ahead and rotate the temple rod here. And I'm going to close this again, so it's applying pressure here. So you'll see a slight flex or bend in these temple rods, which means they're applying pressure to the patient's head, but creating that stability that we need as well. Okay? At this point in time, the patient is positioned properly the way we need to in the device. I would go over to the computer, press on the ready button on the capture screen, and then just before I press on the hand switch, I'm then going to provide the following instructions to the patient. Number one, I want to go ahead and close your eyes here at this point. Okay? And then what I want you to do here is you're going to open your mouth as wide as you can, but you need to be, remain comfortable during the scan itself. Because if you're experiencing any pain, you may not be able to hyperextend your jaw that long. Okay? And then what you're going to do though, you're going to maintain that position until I tell you you can relax again. Okay? So at this point in time, once I've hit the ready button, go ahead and open your mouth as wide as you can, remain comfortable. I'm going to step out of the room, do my image capture, and I'll tell you when you can then close your mouth again. Once you have positioned your patient in the device, left click on the icon that says ready in the bottom right hand corner to set the device into capture position. At this point I'm now ready to capture my CT scan, which is indicated by the green light on the upper left hand corner of my hand switch. I'm going to press down firm on the button itself and make sure to keep equal pressure the entire time. When the light turns orange, it means radiation comes from the device as it's rotating around the patient. When the light turns off here, it means we're done. Release our pressure and put the cradle. At this point in time, we're now done taking our CT scan. So what I'm going to do is make sure that you stay in the device until it's until ready to exit out. So what I'm going to do here then is rotate the temple rod knob in the front counterclockwise to open it up here for me. I'll pull it up a little bit for you and go ahead and exit out of the device again. And that's it. After releasing the patient from the system, navigate back to the capture PC. You'll be prompted to verify that you captured the image in open position and then respond to the question asking to capture the same in now a closed position. If so, navigate the mouse to the icon that says OK and then left click. This will then set the device to capture the same and now a closed position. Left click on confirm to lock those settings and communicate that to your PaxEye system. Once prompted, you'll then be instructed to position your patient for your TMJ lateral closed position. At this point in time, we finished doing our TMJ with the mouth in an open position, and now we're going to do the same thing now with the mouth in a closed position. When I chose the option on the computer screen for closed, I selected confirm, and as the machine was configuring itself, I made sure the patient was out of the device as it calibrated itself. Now it's back into position to do our uh, patient position here for our TMJ in a closed position. So, positioning as far as the device itself is going to be the same. Okay? I'm going to have your hands on the bottom of the bar, palm is facing up towards the ceiling, the ridge of your nose, or the ridge here uh, at the base of your nose, Okay, and you put, place your feet like you did before, and then also when you close this on your on your side of your head there as well. Okay, so come on forward here and put your hands on the bottom of the bar, please, like that, and your feet shoulder width apart, and come on forward just a little bit like that. Perfect. Okay, and then last thing, come over here then, and this should be pretty much at the same height as it was for the previous scan. So come on forward here and put your base of your nose right on top of this here, just like that. Perfect. Okay, so if you need to, you can verify, make sure the fangled light is positioned where it was before. Verify the mid satellite is still centered here, so I can move over just a little bit like that. In between the eyebrows, the filter from above the upper lip right there. And again, just make sure the canine light, I'll make it as, as distal as possible there. Once all that is configured, I'll rotate this here again. So I'm going to apply pressure to the side of the patient's head to the point where you see a slight flex. Okay. At this point in time, we're ready to do our image capture. I would then go over to the computer click on the ready button to get the arm in proper position 
and just before I press down on the capture button, I'm then going to provide the following instructions to the patient. I want the patient to close their eyes, I want them to swallow, and at the same time, bite down the back teeth. I want to remain that full occlusion until the patient to release. Okay. So from that standpoint here, close your eyes, swallow, bite down your back teeth, and then count to 30. After positioning your patient for the TMJ closed position, navigate back to the acquisition PC and then left click on the icon that says ready in the bottom right hand corner. This will then set the device into capture mode. At this point I'm now ready to capture my CT scan, which is indicated by the green light on the upper left hand corner of my hand switch. I'm going to press down firm on the button itself and make sure to keep equal pressure the entire time. When the light turns orange, it means radiation comes from the device as it's rotating around the patient. When the light turns off here, it means we're done. Release our pressure and put the cradle. At this point in time, we're now done taking our CT scan. So what I'm going to do is make sure that you stay in the device until, until it's ready to exit out. So what I'm going to do here then is rotate the temple rod knob in the front counterclockwise to open it up here for me. I'll pull it up a little bit for you and go ahead and exit out of the device again. And that's it. After capturing the image with the mouth in a closed position and releasing the patient, navigate back to the capture software. Verify that you've captured the desired image and then left click on the word save. After the capture software is closed, to verify the image is saved within the Easy Dent 4 database, left click on the patient name under the patient list to refresh the database, navigate to the thumbnail view above, double click, and then view the image on your computer screen. This concludes our four sectional view TMJ using the PaxEye Panorama system. Thank you for your time and thank you for being a valued member of our Vatech America family.